Hello and welcome to the HGC. Today's video is going to be the disassembly and repair of a laptop HP model DV7-4295 US. Uh, but before we get into that, did you know I do giveaways? That's right. I give away as much as $100 a month either in cash or game systems or electronics items. By all means, check out my giveaway, my active giveaways playlist and consider being an active subscriber on this channel. Come back from time to time and the more active subscribers I get, the more I will give away. So without further ado, let's get to the laptop. <clears throat> okay, so from this point on, I'm going to be voice narrating this because uh, I can never uh, get time to do all the talking and everything in one video. Uh, this video has been slightly shortened to accommodate for phone calls and all the interruptions. <laughs> okay, so uh, remove the battery. It's obvious that the previous owner did some repair attempts on this. It was in for having a white screen. No video wouldn't boot. <sighs> okay, so Phillips screwdriver, small variety. Uh, sometimes these uh, compartment covers are a little hard to remove, so I usually recommend having a spudger of some sort or something nice and flat and sturdy that you can use to pry up the cover in order to, uh, how you say, uh, open it without damaging it or tearing it up. <laughs> a, a butter knife will work, but it's still a little fatter than would be recommended. If you got an old one, you can destroy, take it out on the sidewalk, flatten out the tip, sharpen it up a little bit, then dull it so that you're not going to cut anything. Uh, as you take this apart, pay very, very close attention to exactly where you remove the screws and have a nice open work area to where you'll have all the room you need to put all the screws in order, preferably exactly the way you took them out. This will allow you to put it back together without getting screws in the wrong places. Now I'm not doing that on this particular laptop because on this particular laptop the customer has already been inside and most of the screws are in the wrong locations anyway and I already knew <laughs> that was the case. It was a little obvious. As you can see the breezel on it is missing and uh, although you won't be able to see the fact that one screw is not in the right place you'll you'll just need to understand that uh, I did wind up having to find a few extra screws to take the place of the missing ones that he didn't get put back in if you take a long screw and you put it in a location where a short screw was supposed to be then you can damage the casing you can damage uh, visually the top side of the board you can damage your keyboard you can short out the circuit board totally destroy it hard drive comes out with one simple screw I usually recommend putting the screw back in the hard drive and then setting that off to the side that way you know for a fact which screw belongs to it Okay, I probably won't talk through the entire video, just mainly on the highlights. So just uh, kick back, watch this video all the way through at least once before you start opening your laptop and doing this, because you really should have an idea of what you're getting yourself into before you do it. And speaking of interruptions, Clovis X speaking.
Hello? Yes, how can I help you? Yes. Yes, I do. What's going on? Uh, okay. Uh, 65 flat rate for the replacement of the USB that I includes the new upgraded USB. 65. Yeah, I keep my prices. I keep my prices nice and low so that uh, you don't get ripped off or your game system murdered from other people around here that are learning off of YouTube and destroying the boards. Trust me, I get it every day. <laughs> uh, usually it's a next day thing depending on the amount of work I have in at the time you're dropping it off. Do you have the address and everything or would you like me to text that to you when, when, when we get off here? Okay, so I'm open Monday through Friday, 8 to 8, whatever's convenient for you. Just uh, give me a holler, let me know you're on the way. That way you know I haven't run an errand or anything. Although I'm very rarely out more than 5 10 minutes at a time. Not a problem. Now, how about? Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so on this one, basically just take out every single screw you can find. Uh, some of the screws on this box are very tiny and you'll need an extra small screwdriver. Uh, you can go to Lowe's and buy a cobalt, uh, excuse me, a cobalt set of screwdrivers. They come with a few Torx drivers and a couple of flatheads. Perfect kit for opening one of these things. Uh, if your previous repairman put a security torch screw in it like this one uh, had, then you'll also have the driver needed to remove it. Okay, so, uh, let's see, where were we? Okay, on the RF board, which is your Wi-Fi, not really RF, but <laughs> Uh, mark the with a pin mark where the black wire goes that way you don't get them mixed up and everything goes back exactly the way it's put you don't need to mark where the white wire goes because it's obvious once you put the black wire back on it is back exactly where you need to go and there's only one wire left <laughs> okay so at this, once you get all the screws out, very carefully lift up the keyboard and remove the cord. Oop. I'll have to come back and re-edit that to zoom that in. I don't know where my keyframe went, but I'll, 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 you won't notice any of that when you watch the video through me later. Okay, remove all of the ribbon cables very carefully and gently. You don't want to rip these and you don't want to damage them. Okay, one more off to the side of the uh, far corner. Okay, once you get them all removed, go ahead and flip it back over one last time and go ahead and remove the rest of the stuff in the box. Now, with all likelihood, this, these two memory cards are not going to be in your way, but it's better and safer to go ahead and remove them just to be on the safe side. You don't want to damage them. Don't touch any of the components on it. Grab them on the sides. At this point, excuse me, all you need to do is very carefully lift up the upper casing. It m might require, oops, I'm sorry, uh, remove the screws that holds the upper casing in place and then lift up the upper casing. Uh, 
in some cases, especially on newer laptops that hasn't been opened before, uh, there will be little plastic tabs on the inside, so you may need to use your spudger to separate it a little bit, uh, usually fairly easy. Take your time, go extremely slow. If something doesn't seem to want to come off easily, then with all likelihood there's still a screw in place, so be very careful. See how I'm kind of moving it around a little bit? I'm going to look at the bottom here and see if I missed something to make certain. And I did, in fact. Right here, it looked like a screw, a uh, small screw here, but that wasn't. It was just a piece of plastic. However, take a look here. These, believe it or not, even though they're super tiny and super short, they hold the upper uh, part of the housing of the laptop on. So, yeah, sometimes it's real easy to overlook something like that and then it don't want to come off. Now look, see how easy that come right up? Now you see how I only lifted it up a little teeny bit and then when I did finally lift it up, I lifted it up to where I can see that there was nothing connected before I moved it away from the board. An absolute must. Some of these have little tiny tiny wires hooked to them that will easily be snapped off and cost you a pretty penny to replace them so always go very very slowly this is not going to be a 15 minute job and it'll take 10 times longer than this video I promise you so uh, have a nice wide open area that you can work with that will allow you to do this pretty much all day long and make sure everybody that comes in the house knows absolutely do not touch or move anything under any circumstances <laughs> All right. now we're going to remove some of the components now I wear a static strap on my ankle so for you I would just avoid touching the components of the board and if you have something metal nearby that you know is grounded like the casing of your computer if it's open and you can touch that that will ground you out remove any static from you very very carefully remove all plugs and then once you get them all removed the lower housing will have to be just slightly bent back to allow the ports to clear the side of the uh, case and this is probably how you wound up breaking the fan shroud portion watch here I'll get to lifting it up I've got one more wire and see how it's still kind of stuck in alright watch my thumb there you go. I'm going to pull back on that. Oop, there it popped right out. Checking it for any cords. Very gently turning it over. There's another one. At this point, you can clean the fans. Once you get the board completely unplugged, it, you could either re renew the thermal paste, which I would actually highly recommend. Or at very least, if it's a if it's a newer system and you, within about three years of age, you probably don't need to replace the thermal paste. But you absolutely want to clean out the fan, very very good. And then, if you need any other repairs from this point, go ahead and do the repairs on the motherboard. And. Make sure you put the motherboard somewhere where it is not going to get damaged. So at this point we're going to actually set this motherboard off to the side and I'm going to repair some damage that was done to the case. Look here where the hinge is actually busted out. Okay, The screw nut and everything is still there. It just does not want to stay in place because it's ripped out. So 
because the customer don't want to spend a whole lot of money on the system I'm just going to use some hot glue to hold the uh, screw nut in place and so long as he's gentle opening and closing it that'll be perfectly fine I mean it's not like his box is already uh, like looking brand spanking new or something like that uh, I, I usually recommend just replacing the entire shell but that can also be extremely expensive sometimes they want sixty seventy eighty dollars for a replacement shell <laughs> or for that matter lower housing so we just hold that in place for a moment or two until that cools enough to hold it and as you can see it's already cooled enough to hold it in place now these things do get fairly warm in that corner and I will explain to him to allow it to cool off before he closes it he's going to have to be gentle with this system <laughs> because of that hinge and keep a few things in mind as far as not closing it while it's been running for a long period of time because they do get fairly warm and the uh, hot glue will become softer okay, so we're reinstalling the motherboard go through and be very careful not to accidentally bury any cords or plugs make sure you plug every single last thing in make sure it's all the way plugged in and evenly inserted <coughs> any ribbon cables you put on make sure the little line for them is absolutely even and is all the way installed nice flush and straight otherwise you're going to wind up having to tear the whole thing apart again all right. uh, if you're working on a virgin system you'll already know where all the motherboard screws go so just put them back exactly the way they came out uh, this is where a good computer camera comes in handy take a lot of pictures as you go for references that way you know that way you can't forget or if you can video it I mean there's nothing wrong with videoing what you're doing now uh, if you do post up a video make certain you let everybody know before you start you don't have experience on this you're following the recommendations of somebody else and you are in no way a technician that way they can decide whether or not they wish to follow your video a lot of people put up videos and they don't tell them that they're not a technician or they don't tell them that they don't have any kind of background in electronics whatsoever and then kids follow it and because you left things out or didn't put things back now they damage their system the same way you did you just didn't know it until later okay so please use a little common sense and unless everything went perfectly good for you and your laptop lasted a couple of weeks straight and everything seems to be working perfectly fine then if you like upload your video All right. if you upload a video and and then the next day your laptop fails and you leave that video up well guess what with all likelihood the next kid that tries to fix his laptop fix following your video his, his is going to fail the next day for the same reason Okay, so, yeah, please uh, use some common sense whenever uploading this kind of stuff. Wait till after you know for a fact the, the repair you performed lasted. Uh, and for God's sakes, don't show reflows using heat guns from Home Depot or Lowe's that's designed to uh, remove paint from furniture. If you're going to show a reflow, at least explain to them or for that matter go 
get some education on the topic you know learn what temperatures you need to hit at learn what a profile is so that you know how to properly heat it up in order to prevent from popping the solder balls and quite frankly home repairs or home reflows I don't care if you're using a hot air soldering iron where you can control the temperature most of them wind up in a cast catastrophic failure or solder damage just because you're heating it up too quickly or not quickly enough or you damage other components knock them off the board because you're sitting it on the table while it's still hot or bouncing it around or well, I mean just there's it's a holy nightmare if you need a reflow of a chip you're much better off taking the system to a qualified repairman that actually has schooling on the topic has proper equipment and can do the job right that would ensure your best possible chance of a very long lasting fix or repair possible okay. home reflows for crack solder may let you know that it's crack solder but you could have also damaged that chip so that in a few days later the chip itself fails and then you get mad at the next repairman for telling you that it can't be repaired because the chip failed or uh, it has to have a total reball and you're not educated enough to know that uh, because of what you did you damaged the solder so badly that when he does try to lift the chip to do a reball that the solder actually has so much crystallization that the heat required to remove it from the board will actually melt off the contacts that the solder is connected to making your board absolutely not possible to repair so avoid home reflows <coughs> some places uh, will actually do the reflow for you for as little as 20 bucks they're not going to give you any kind of a warranty on the board because or for that matter uh, a refund because they're unable to test it without all of the extra stuff that goes to it but twenty dollars for a reflow 50-50 shot for you it's actually worth it so if you can bring in a laptop board to somebody to do a reflow if you're willing to lose twenty bucks if it doesn't work tell them to do the reflow it doesn't matter if they give you a refund if it doesn't work because quite frankly if it doesn't work at least you didn't spend seventy five dollars or a hundred and twenty dollars on a reflow or repair attempt and then have them charge you thirty forty dollars worth of a repair attempt fee and or diagnostics fee and you don't and you also don't have to worry about people taking parts out of your game uh, laptops or game systems you know now I know where these screws go and how long they're supposed to be so unfortunately with this particular one I can't explain to you exactly specific which screw goes where because I am having to figure out which screw was supposed to go where and the fact that there's a lot of them missing <laughs> so uh, not really a whole lot I can do other than let you see how it was disassembled and how it was put back together and talk to you and stress the importance of putting screws back in the exact same hole they came out of because even a even something as small as a half a millimeter too long can seriously damage your laptop or fry it completely to where it would not be repairable that's something you absolutely do not want okay so let's see right here uh, tried to put the screw in here 
it's not the right size although they look absolutely identical it's just a very small difference in the actual thread size as to where they went and once we get these in here we'll be able to reinstall the disk drive we want to go through and get all of the screws in place before we go putting all the miscellaneous stuff in. Okay, so now it's time to put the drive in. We remove the screw that I took out of it. This will just slide in, click in place, push it all the way to the back, and then screw the screw in. Now, remember, these, this you're screwing into plastic the majority of the time. This is not a car. There is absolutely no reason to super tighten these things. You screw it down till it's snug, tighten it up just a tiny bit, and that's it. There's no need to torque them down. All right, snug is good, super tight is bad. You'll strip the heads, you'll mess up your screwdrivers. You know, so we're gonna install the Wi-Fi board. The screw in here. remember we marked it earlier so we know which where the black wire goes now, usually they're going to line up already but it's always a good idea that you mark where the black wire went and a good pair of tweezers makes this really easy because they're not the easiest things sometimes to line up in order to snap into place once you get the black wire on, it's obvious where the white wire goes. <laughs> Once you're satisfied that they're all the way down and in place, you're all good. searching around for a few screws that are missing. <coughs> We're just about there. We just need to install the hard drive, find a few more screws to put in locations that really need them especially like the upper corner nearest the broken hinge and I decided against putting that security torque back in replaced it with an identical size Phillips. That way if the customer wants to get in his system he can. It's probably why he wound up breaking so much of it is because he couldn't remove that security or excuse me the uh, torx head bit and was trying to pry it. All my repairs I let you open them up and disassemble them under my warranty now, if you break it to the point to where I can't fix it anymore, well, that's your fault, not mine. Uh, if I can fix it and it's part of my repair that's bad, as long as it's not obviously broken because of something you did, I'll fix it. And I'll fix whatever else 
you damaged for an extra fee if you want to go there if you don't well it either works without it or you can fix it yourself later truthfully I mean, I'm a firm believer in allowing my customers the ability to if they feel comfortable and capable of disassembling something for cleaning I'm a firm believer in allowing them to do that that's why I do not put warranty seals on my repairs I usually warranty whatever I do for a year uh, and not just one repair <laughs> unless of course you broke it yourself and then it's obvious that uh, you did it and trust me I can tell if it was a failure or something you did So at this point we're pretty much done. All we need to do is put the battery in. And do one last little check. Set the battery in. Oops, set it in the wrong way. Flip that over. There we go. The battery on this laptop did turn out to be bad, but that's the least of his worries. Apparently he let it sit too long powered down. Batteries do not like to be dead for any length of time. So if your laptop is broken, charge it at least once a week, once every three to four days. Literally, otherwise your battery will die, even if it's brand new. As little as a week without power and being absolutely, totally dead can destroy a battery. Not absolutely guaranteed, but it very easily can. Okay, so we're going to power it up, see how everything works out. Okay, so she fired up. I'm going to do that one more time for you. He actually had some sort of uh, secondary operating system on it that's his business so I uh, had to select Windows 7 in order to boot and as you can see it's booting up perfectly fine as soon as the customer comes bring me brings me the breezel that he forgot to put back on uh, this laptop will be ready to go stay safe happy gaming everybody and Stop by from time to time. See what's new. Check out my giveaway playlists. Who knows? You might find something you like. Or win some cash.